pumpkins are the most iconic symbol of Halloween. Today I'm going to take a 36 inch block of foam and turn it into a giant jack-o-lantern. There are many foam suppliers around the country that can custom cut a block of foam to your specifications. I got mine from Haunter's Foam in Southern California. If you're not able to get a solid block, you can take a two inch by four by eight sheet of insulation foam found at your local home improvement store and glue them together. After drawing a guideline on the top and the sides of the foam, I use a two foot bow cutter to cut the edges off the foam to start giving the pumpkin some shape. Once the top is cut, I flip it over and I make markings along the top and the sides once again, but I add a few more inches so that it will be at a steeper angle. Once I finish cutting the hard edges off, I use a hot knife to cut the dip in the top of the pumpkin. Next I take a hot wire tool and I bend the wire in the middle to a point. This will help to create the segments of the pumpkin. At this point, I realized there were still some hard edges that I didn't like, so I used my hot wire knife to cut them off before continuing with the router. I always keep a rag with me whenever I use a hot wire tool so that I can frequently wipe off melted foam because as you cut through the foam it will melt and it will start to drip and that will burn holes into your foam so if you're constantly wiping it will prevent burns and build up on your tool. Once you finish the top, flip your pumpkin over and continue the pattern on the bottom.
For the next step, I take a metal horsehair brush and I use it to carve, smooth, and shape the edges of the pumpkin. It will be pretty rough, but we'll smooth that down later. Continue smoothing all hard edges. Next, I take an orbital sander with 80 grit sandpaper and smooth out all of that rough texture to a smooth finish. There will still be some imperfections, little divots here and there, but not to worry, the hard coating will fill those in. This next step is more fun if you have a little buddy. 
take your 80 grit sandpaper, fold it like a taco, and run it through the deep crevices of your pumpkin segments. This will help smooth out the spots you couldn't get with your Orville sander. Once the sanding is complete, it's time to draw the face of a jack-o'-lantern. It helps to have a reference. And keep in mind the placement of the shape along with the crevices of the pumpkin so that something doesn't fall in a weird position. Flip your pumpkin over and draw a large circle. This will be the reference point for the bottom we will cut out later. Next, I used a four foot bow cutter to cut the pumpkin in two. This bow cutter has an extension kit, so it can be made into a smaller size for smaller pumpkins. Again, I will use the router and bend the wire to a circular shape. This will allow me to carve large chunks of foam out, thus hollowing out my jack-o'-lantern. Continue hollowing out, being mindful of the edges so that you don't cut all the way through. Again, we will use the hot wire knife to cut out the face. Remember to continuously wiping your blade, keeping it clean will help it to cut faster. Next, I will use a mini router. You can get this as a set with the industrial router. I use this tool to thin out some of the thicker areas of the face. We need to thin it out and get it more uniform and flat. So later when we adhere some frosted panels to conceal the inside of the pumpkin, it has a flat surface to be glued onto.
on the mini router, I bend it into a flat shape. Here is a close up of the texture that we're trying to achieve. It won't be perfectly smooth, but at least it gives us something to work for. We need an edge at least one inch all the way around the face so that we have a surface to glue onto later. So use the routing tools to hollow out a space. Again, take your orbital and sand out your edges and smooth out that surface even more. It'll pay off later. Take some 80 grit sandpaper and sand those hard edges off the corners and edges from when you used your hot knife to cut the face. Do the front as well, just to take off those hard lines. After dusting off your pumpkin, we're going to create a template for the face that we're going to make frosted panels with later. Parchment paper does not stick to hot glue. That's why we use this material. Use a Sharpie to trace the face on. It's easy to do from the inside before rather than after. Now it's time to glue our pumpkin back together. My favorite glue is Styro Goo by Hotwire Foam Factory. It's an instant tack glue that's perfect for quick adhesion. We will brush it along the edge, we secure the back of our pumpkin. Use bamboo skewers to help hold it in place as it dries. I like to give my pumpkins a little bit of extra shape and expression. To do this, I use a two-part epoxy clay called Easy Carb by Polygem. It's mixed one to one and smoothed out with water. I aim for the high points, the tops of the eyes, the tip of the nose, the curl in the mouth. This won't look perfect, but that's okay. The hard coating will smooth it out later. To feel sticky, just add water and smooth it out. After you're done shaping your face, let it dry overnight or at least eight hours before continuing to the next step.
Again, we will use our hot wire knife and a scrap piece of foam from the inside of the pumpkin to cut the stem. Make swooping cuts until you get a basic shape for a pumpkin stem. We will coat this later. I like to cut out some triangle shapes out of my stem and get them to line up with the segments of the pumpkin. After you get your basic shape, I like to attach my pumpkin stem with great stuff. Allow to dry. After the great stuff has dried, use a utility knife to cut away the excess. Again, I will be using epoxy clay to give the stem some shape and dimension. I like to start my stems by rolling balls of clay and placing them at the base of each segment of the stem. I then take larger sections of clay and place it over the body of the stem. I then push those balls of clay up into the stem in a spiraling manner. This will give it a whimsical, twisty shape. At this point, I use my fingernail to smooth out and emboss texture and graining into the stem. Keep molding it until you're happy with the pattern. Sometimes I spread my fingers out and use all of them at, in a twisting motion across the surface of the stem. Again, let this dry for eight hours or overnight. I accidentally carved too deep when using the router when hollowing out my pumpkin. So to patch up the hole, I'm gonna use some of the epoxy clay to smooth it out. It's hard to get perfectly smooth. It's a little funky, but that's okay. The next material we use will smooth it out. This next step seems excessive, but it's very important to getting a smooth finish for your pumpkin. Drydex is a spackling paste. It's tinted pink when wet, and when it's completely dry, it's white, letting you know it's ready to move on. Cover the entire surface of your pumpkin. It's going to look funky and messy, but that's okay. All of the imperfections will be sanded out later.
After you have coated your entire pumpkin in dry dex and it has dried and turned white, use 80 grit sandpaper and sand all the imperfections out. This will be fairly easy, but use a brush to brush away the dust. Next, I will create texture on my stem by using Aquastone by Foafex. It's a high bonding material with a sandy grit that helps us mimic the fine fibers in a pumpkin stem. This stuff is great. It sticks to everything, even PVC pipe, which is great for all haunters applications. Once your pumpkin has been completely dusted off, it's time for the final hard coating. I use Styroplast by Hotwire Foam Factory. It's a two-part epoxy that goes on liquid, it's brushable, and it dries to a hard plastic finish. This material has about a 20 minute working time, so you have to move fast. I use chip brushes because these will end up in the trash. I like to buy disposable drop cloths from Home Depot, so when the project is done, I can just throw it away. You must work quickly because as time passes, the material will thicken up. As the material sits in the bucket, it will generate heat, which will cause the material to set off faster. Sometimes I pour the material over the entire project and then use the brush to smooth it out. That way you will have a longer working time because the product won't be heating itself up. Continue until the whole pumpkin is coated. I highly recommend wearing an old long sleeve shirt as this material did drip all over my hands and took hours to peel off later. After the first coat had dried, I noticed there are some heavy drips that I didn't like, so I sanded them out with my orbital sander. Now I'm going to apply a second coat. I put the pumpkin on its side so I can apply a layer of the styroplast to the inside of the face. This will give us a nice smooth finish to glue our frosted panels to later. Apply the second coat as you did before and allow to dry a minimum of two hours, but no more than 12 hours on the next step as we begin to paint.
Once your pumpkin has dried a minimum of two hours, it's time to paint. I like to use Montana Gold Spray Paint. It's a professional line of paint that dries to a really good satin finish. I use four colors of orange in my pumpkins. First, I start with the medium orange and paint the entire pumpkin. Next, I take my deepest shade of orange and I put it into the deep crevices of the pumpkin from the bottom to the top. And then I concentrate on the bottom of the pumpkin and sweeping upward in an ombre effect. After you've added shading, I take my lightest orange and I apply it to all the high points, the tops of the eyes, the curl of the mouth. Use this to highlight and detail your pumpkin. After the pumpkin was painted, we noticed that the inside of the area that would have been the cut portion of the pumpkin didn't really stand out. So I went back and added a light yellow and then touched up around the face. Do this step first, then you won't have to touch up like I did. Now it's time to paint the stem. I used a satin sheen exterior olive green. Paint the entire stem and let dry. Now it's time to highlight. Use a lighter shade of a limey green and hit all the high points. Use a dry brush method to bring out all the detail. For added depth of color, I used a straw tone paint just on the top and lightly brushed it downward. This mimics the stem drying out at the top. In case you forgot to draw your template when the pumpkin was open, you can do that now. Tape some parchment paper to the face, use a sharpie, and trace your line. I like to conceal the rough interior of my pumpkins. To do this, I will be melting hot glue sticks and making panels. Start with an electric skillet and cut down your glue sticks to fit. 
This is the seven inch skillet you can get off Amazon. I have since purchased a larger skillet so I don't have to do as many batches of glue. Let it melt down until it's completely liquid. It will smoke really badly. Next, you will pour your hot glue over your pattern. Keep repeating until the whole pattern is covered. I highly recommend getting a larger skillet so that you can do this faster. This process took over an hour and several batches to complete the entire face. Be careful, the glue and the skillet is very hot. Use a painter stir stick to help smooth the material out over the surface. You will have some really rough areas from doing batches of glue and them overlapping. Take a heat gun and remelt them down. They'll smooth out and blend into each other and it'll be just fine. It's an extra step, but it's worth it. Once your panels have cooled, use a utility blade to cut out your design. Leave an extra inch around your design so that you have an overlap to glue onto your pumpkin. The nice thing about melting down glue is you can take the excess and you can remelt it down so there isn't any waste. Now we adhere the panels. This is also a good time to touch up the paint on the bottom. Run a line of hot glue around the pattern of the face, then attach the panels and let dry. To light my jack-o'-lanterns, I use an LED flame bulb with an exterior light socket. I hope this inspires you to make your own giant jack-o'-lantern. If you like this video, smash that like button. And subscribe!